Today we're in the studio and uh, Dean Mellor has popped in and to say good day. So I figure since just before the trip this is as clean as it will ever be, it's probably a great idea to have a look over all the accessories and all the modifications that we've made to this vehicle to help us get the job done. The thing looks absolutely stunning at the moment, it is spotless. So tomorrow morning we're heading across the Simpson Desert. We are going to be doing the Madigan line. So about 18 months ago, I was contemplating a build with a 79 series. You go to some very remote places and you carry a lot of gear and the thing's got to work for you. There's nothing standard on the market that would suit your requirements, is there? No, I, I must admit, I even looked at the Dodge Ram for uh, a bit there, but I worked out that the payload, it just didn't have the payload mm. for me to uh, cart my gear. So we simply went to Illawarra Toyota, told them that I wanted to buy this truck, but there was all these mods that needed to be done on it. They organised everything. So they organised sourcing the vehicle, they shipped it to Melbourne to Mark's Ford Rub Adapters. It goes down there for a second stage of manufacture. They build the vehicle to the specifications that is listed with Canberra for a national certification for this type of build. Mm -hmm. It's then taken to Recaro, who had an engineer work out and calculate exactly what needed to be done with the rear seat conversion. So we've converted it to a three-seater. It then went to Trig Point to put the service body on. It then came back to Sydney for registration at Illawarra Toyota. The vehicle itself registered at this point is 3,010 kilos, I believe. That included 75 kilos of water and fuel. So straight after registration, we took the vehicle to ARB in Moorbank, who had assigned a team of builders to put it all together. So these guys had only two weeks to do their work. We took it from there to Queensland mm -hmm. uh, to get a paint protection organised through Changi, A1 Custom, he's an amazing guy. And fortunately, uh, Australia has some amazing products. Yeah. Everything here is an Australian product. Yeah, you're very lucky. I mean, Australia's got the best four-wheel drive aftermarket industry in the world, bar none. Well, let's start from the front, Dino, and let's yeah. talk about what's on here. So this is ARB 79 Series Deluxe Bar. It's got a bit of a name in the background where they call it the Big Tube Bar. They've basically yeah. gone for a bigger rail. Without a doubt, the best looking bar on the market, I reckon. We've got the AR32s on the front, which put out a huge amount of light, which I'm yeah. really, I really love. Just these two lights on their own do a fantastic job. One Platinum Xeon 12000 with synthetic rope. Yeah, with the synthetic rope, I mean, that takes a hell of a lot of weight out of it, doesn't it? That's correct. We have a rated recovery point. Yeah, tower. a rated ARB recovery point there. Yeah. But the guys at Safari 4x4 Engineering were a huge help. Give me an understanding of what could be done with a vehicle like this, fitted with DPF systems, could be done actually safely. You've gone with some BFGs, I noticed, on this vehicle. Yeah, Dino, we've gone for the BFG mud terrain KM3s. Thought I should give them a go. You've got them on ROH rims, a vapor, I think you call them. Yeah, they're vapors. The reason I've gone for that rim is that they suit the portal upgrade yeah. because of the 41 positive offset. However, as well as that, they are rated for heavier vehicles. As far as the service body is concerned, Australia makes some absolutely amazing service bodies. There's so many manufacturers of products that are really good. And you know, it's hard to pick, but this was my final result going for this one. Uh, Trick Point make this uh, great, great canopy that is a combination of steel frame construction as well as alloy for doors, alloy roof, alloy base. The best thing about this is it's not too long, so it keeps the weight forward. With the guards, the body, the toolboxes, the bumper, everything on it came to 305 kilos. Wow, that's pretty light. Pretty light. Yeah. And as you know, uh, some of those trays that come on uh, the standard Toyotas, yeah. they can be anywhere up to 360 kilos. We split this system into two components. Mm -hmm. We've got the left-hand side is for catering, yep. for looking after the crew. On the driver's side, it's all about photography. So all the computer work will be done over there, charging of batteries, setting up cameras, tripods and so forth will be stored on that side. So there's only one other thing that has to come into it. Gab's not into coffee. We're going to actually make coffee on the computer side. So you've got a custom drawer system in the back here too, I see. Yeah, we had a custom drawer set up, made specifically to keep a nice flat deck. We've got a 60 litre ARB fridge yep. uh, right. on a drop side. So for the driving of the vehicle, we're using links. Instead of having buttons all over the dash, we've got all this lighting around the vehicle controlled by links in mm -hmm. the front. So as we're driving down the road, we've got full control of that. Uh, we're also using links to pump the tyres up. In the back, we're running a product called Red Arcs Red Vision. Now, Red Vision allows us to look after all the lighting, look after how much water we've got in the water tank, how the battery level's going. When we're charging gear or utilising the power, we can see how much power we're using. And again, whilst I'm working there in front of that computer, I can get a full piece of information on how much power we're using at any one time. We can see how much charge we've got with solar or yep. charge we've got while we're driving. 
We can plug the whole system into 240 if we want to. Stuart Peddle from Red Arc spent about seven hours with me specifying this system and then he assisted on the install with a full three days. There's a lot of wiring here, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. We have four 60 amp hour lithium batteries in the back, right up the front of the service body. They're from Revolution Power Australia. Red Arc use it as a benchmark for their products. So all of their testing mm -hmm. is handled with that battery because they know it's reliable. And you've got two fixed solar panels up on the roof of the yeah, service totally. body there? That's correct, a total of 300 watts of solar and we have literally covered the whole service body to make sure that I don't end up putting any more load up the top there. So the system powers up a 3000 watt inverter. Now that is a massive inverter, but it doesn't actually mean that it uses that much more power. So if I'm only charging small batteries, it's not using heaps of power. But when I do need the power, we're pretty sure that we're not going to have a hard drive just turn off on us because of a power outage. And it will even run a coffee machine. Well, that's very important. So underneath we've got a 75 litre water tank and we've upgraded the fuel. So we've got an ARB Frontier tank, which gives us a whopping 180 litres of fuel. At the back of the service body, we've got the Heyman Reese X-Bar. Oh, it's Sick. phenomenal. Yeah. It's a great design. It's got those three rated recovery points as well as your tow bar. So turning the cabin to be a three-seater, gives me more capacity for camera gear. I want to move the cameras forward. We've got about 80 kilos of camera gear that instead of putting it in the service body, we've got that behind the driver's seat. It gives us great access to the gear and we know that it's safe. Interior-wise, to get it away from that farm truck look, we've got a full set of Recaros. Each of these seats are different. We've also got the uh, department interior console, plus a rear console for the person that might be sitting in the back. It's a much more modern look and Wow, it looks completely different to original. As well as this, Gab's idea, since I can't even use the mirror, why don't we put the HX1 up there? You've done an incredible amount of work to this thing in quite a short period of time. Well, mate, <laughs> when you drew the curtains back and I looked at it, I was like, wow, that is something else. I mean, this is easily one of the, if not the best 79 Cruiser I've ever seen. I don't reckon it's the best, but it's pretty, pretty good. It's mate, pretty I've, I've seen some pretty good ones, but this is out there. This is something else. So thanks, Dino. Thanks for dropping in and to see our new rig. And yeah, we better get on with this shoot before it gets dirty. So to follow the build of the Mighty 79, stay tuned to ARB's Instagram and Facebook pages and read the full story in ARB's 4x4 Culture Magazine.